Right now at noon, Pittsburgh police are continuing to search for a suspect after the murder of a 17 year old and why Madison Metropolitan School District is changing the start time for a number of its schools. From the channel 3000.com alert center. This is News 3 now at noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Tuesday afternoon. We'll get to those stories in just a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Hi, Chris. Hello, Mark. Hello, everyone watching at home or work. What a beautiful day. It certainly shaped up to be 24 hours ago. We were dealing with the cloud cover, the drizzle. It was all out dreary outside. Now most of that cloud cover moving away from us. It is a beautiful look out the door. 74 degrees right now with calm wind as well. Dew points are into the upper 50s, but with that sunshine, although a cold front came through yesterday, we're actually a lot warmer than we were yesterday. Temperatures are certainly on the increase. Lone Rock at 76, Janesville at 77. That can be said for Kenosha and Milwaukee as well. Wisconsin Dells at 73 right now. As we go through the afternoon, look for temperatures to warm up a couple more degrees. We'll likely top out right around 75 here in Madison, but one thing I am watching is a little line of cloud cover trying to filter in from the north and west that could impact parts of northern Wisconsin as we go through the night. We'll be tracking that coming up in Maine weather. All right. Enjoy the day. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. We'll see you in a few minutes. Pittsburgh police are continuing to investigate the homicide of Shea Watson. Right now, police say they have no arrests and no suspects in the death of the 17-year-old. His body was found inside a home on Lyman Lane around 9 o'clock Sunday night. The Dane County Medical Examiner's Office says Watson died of homicidal firearm-related trauma. Police are asking anyone with home surveillance video in that area to contact them in case it leads to any clues. Police say they do not believe the public is in danger. Sauk County deputies are investigating a death in Sauk City. Officers are only telling us that this is an active death investigation. They haven't shared any details on the circumstances surrounding this death. This is very much a developing story this noon. We'll be sharing more information as we learn it here on News 3 Now and over at Channel3000.com. An investigation, an investigation is underway in Richland County after a 63-year-old woman died in a house fire. The Richland County Sheriff's Office says they were called to County Highway U in Sylvan Township around 10 o'clock Saturday night. They say when they arrived at the two-story home was in flames. Deputies say they determined an explosion had occurred and they found Bonnie Strothman dead at the scene. 68-year-old Alan Strothman was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Fire crews were on the scene for about five hours. If you have a student in Madison schools, you'll want to listen up. The district is changing the start times for a number of its schools to boost the academic performance of its middle schools. Spring Harbor, Cherokee, and Jefferson Middle Schools will now start at 840 in the morning. The district says research shows more sleep and later start times for this age bracket helps with everything from attendance to test scores. To accommodate the change, Hegel, Thoreau, and Crestwood will shift to an earlier start time of 7.50 in the morning. The district says they don't think this will have any negative impact on the elementary aged kids. And in our focus groups, for instance, when we have both middle school and elementary school parents, middle school parents will tell you without question that they feel that they're Elementary school children are much better able to equip an early start time, are much better equipped to handle an early start time than their um, pre-adolescents or pre-adolescents. By 2022, all middle schools will have a new start time. To find out if your school is impacted, head to our website. There is a fresh optimism that the U.S. and China may be able to resolve their trade dispute following President Trump's trip to the G7 Economic Summit in France. The next round of negotiations is planned for September, but neither side has announced when the talks will begin. Next week, the U.S. raises tariffs from 10 to 15 percent on more than $300 billion worth of Chinese-made goods. During the G7 summit, President Trump also announced a trade deal with Japan. We're really hindered by a high tariff uh, on our product over there. So this goal would bring the tariff down significantly um, by entering into this trade deal, and we think that'll just be great for beef industry. Well, the price never goes up till the grain bins get empty. And once we start sweeping the bottom of the grain bins, then we start seeing a big bump in price. President Trump and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe say they hope to sign the deal next month.
Fires in the Amazon rainforest continue to burn. It's estimated this year in the Amazon more than 3,500 square miles of forest. An area roughly the size of Yellowstone National Park have fallen to fires. In Peru, people are using whatever they can, shovels, even tree branches to try and smother the flames. Many of the fires are believed to be set by farmers trying to clear land. G7 nations have pledged $20 million to, pr to protect the rainforest from flames, but Brazil's president says he needs an apology from the president of France if he's going to accept an offer of aid. President Bolsonaro says President Macron called him a liar and questioned Brazil's sovereignty. Well, there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. I'm next. We'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. The homemade layered brownies that we're making today are so good, they may cause you to feel weak in the knees. If this is a risk you're willing to take, I suggest to stick around. If you love decadent desserts like I do, you're gonna love what we're making today. It's a homemade brownie topped with a rich peanut butter filling and finished with a layer of fudge. I have to warn you though, these may cause you to feel weak in the knees and you might even drool a bit while you're waiting for your first bite. If that's okay with you, then let's get started. We begin by making a homemade brownie batter, which we'll pour into a pan and bake until it passes the toothpick test. As these bake and cool, we'll make our to die for filling. It's simply some peanut butter and powdered sugar that we beat together until it's nice and fluffy. This gets spread over our baked brownies. Then to make these over the top good, we finish them with a three ingredient chocolate glaze that is pure decadence. Once all the layers are set up, cut it into squares and serve. If your house is anything like mine, there'll be a line out the door as soon as they get a whiff of them. To get the recipe for our Buckeye Brownies, simply visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fudgy good way.
for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Thank you, Howard. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, a sunny and breezy Tuesday. Meteorologist Chris Reese has your first alert forecast right after this. Well, stocks aim to keep yesterday's momentum going and AAA's tidiest hotels by city and state. Diane King Hall has more in today's Money Watch report. Wall Street extended yesterday's advance to a second day in a row in early trade. Investors are keeping one eye on U.S.-China trade relations after President Trump said prospects of a deal were promising. China's currency is heading towards a record monthly drop amid concerns over the festering trade war. The U.N. fell yesterday to its weakest level in nearly a dozen years. The weakness also came amid the prospect of a global recession. The Chinese government has been accused of manipulating its currency. Today, the nation's central bank said a level stronger than traders expected. Meanwhile, Bristol-Myers has taken a major step toward completing its $74 billion acquisition of Celgene. The two pharmaceutical companies found a buyer for a skin treatment whose sale they hope will address antitrust concerns. Amgen has agreed to buy Celgene psoriasis medicine for $13.4 billion. The decision comes after the FTC said the merger could limit competition. And want to know where to stay to wind down your summer travels? AAA is out with a list of the best states and cities for the cleanest hotel rooms. Coming out on top in the state rankings is California, followed by Florida and Texas. For cities, New York is number one, followed by Houston and Washington, D.C. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Thank you, Diane. At the noon hour, the Dow Industrials down 119 points. The Nasdaq off 38. The S&P 500 down 11. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers.
Time now for the weather. Chris is here with a sunny forecast. That's right, and a lot warmer of a forecast today as opposed to, say, this time yesterday. Check this out. Yesterday, we only made it to 68 degrees in Madison. The Dells, 66. These are what the temperatures are like for the average of late September and early October. Now, outside of that, more folks did make it into the 70s, so that was certainly some good news, and we have all made it into the 70s today. The temperature right now, 74. We're seeing those stronger winds coming in out of the west and southwest right now. Janesville, you've made it to 77. 77 as well in Boscobel. For Roqua, a little bit cooler at 71 degrees right now, but what's also warm this time of the year, Lake Michigan. We're starting to reach the peak season for for the warm lake temperature. So down near Chicago, the lake temperatures in the 70s right now, upper 60s for Milwaukee. You go a little bit further towards the north, Sheboygan's lake temperatures are in to the mid 60s. But of course, we're approaching one of the last weekends to be able to hit the water before a lot of folks get ready to head on back to school and get the true school year started. So of course, we are watching that for you guys to be able to get outdoors. But in the meantime, here's weather track right now. No showers or thunderstorms over us at the moment. We are seeing some throughout northern Wisconsin and we'll touch on this just in a moment. This could actually impact things a little bit headed into tomorrow, especially for the northern part of the state. We're watching that. More cloud cover coming in throughout parts of northern and central Minnesota. All of this is associated with a weak little secondary disturbance. We call that a surface trough. That's rotating in behind the overall storm system that came through yesterday with the cold front. High pressure, though. I do think works in our favor as this tries to get closer. We'll start to see some areas of cloud cover, but overall sunshine will win the picture as we go through the rest of the week. Let's go ahead and take you hour by hour, though. You saw the shower chances further towards the north. We'll see those temperatures topping out right around 75 this afternoon. Overnight tonight, though, watch those temperatures fall back into the 50s, and then we'll see more 70s as we head into tomorrow, though I will tell you, a lot of folks are going to struggle to get out of the 60s for those highs. I'm thinking low 70s as we get into your Wednesday. And then on Thursday, we'll notice a stronger southerly wind. Those Thursday temperatures, they might be a little bit warmer before reinforcing shot of some cooler air. Now, I do know that, of course, this is a big travel weekend as we head towards Labor Day. A lot of folks like to get those uh, last little hurrah vacations in. And I have to tell you, we are watching the tropics. Tropical Storm Dorian right now towards the south and east of Puerto Rico. Winds of 50 miles per hour. And I will say we're not too surprised at where Dorian is. When you get towards August, you've got a couple of tropical hot spots. One is the Western Caribbean, another one the Gulf of Mexico, and then the third is the southwestern Atlantic Ocean and then towards the southeastern coastline. And this is exactly where Dorian will go. It'll pass Puerto Rico as a strong tropical storm, but by the time we get you towards Sunday into Monday, we could be watching a landfalling strong tropical storm or weak hurricane into the eastern coast of Florida. So that, of course, is going to be something to keep in mind. We will not have to worry about the tropics, but we do have a couple rain chances to watch and they are minor right now. We're talking Thursday night into Friday and then perhaps again early next week. But I'll tell you what, your overall Labor Day forecast still looks fantastic right now. I, I do want to say some of the models are trending a little bit rainy for the first half of Saturday. I'm hoping that that goes the other direction. I'm watching that one closely, but for now we are going to keep Saturday overall dry in the afternoon. Same for Sunday and Monday. Time means everything. Timing will be <laughs> everything. I know a lot of events are going on on Saturday. People need to know the weather. We're watching that. Big weekend. Yes, it is. All right, Chris, thank you. There's more to come on News Street now at noon. Up next, dietitian Michelle Swader is here answering your health and diet questions. The number to call 270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this.
Dietitian Michelle Swader is here answering your health and diet questions, 270-9933, the number to call. We're going to start by talking about keeping track of what you eat. Right. Yes. We've, we've known for years that the more that you record and track what you are eating, the better success you have, short and long term, with losing weight, watching your portions, watching your carbs. But the biggest gripe is that nobody wants to do it because they feel like it's very time consuming. And so we just had the first study done that actually looked at how long it took. And they followed some people that were tracking and the first month took somebody about 23 minutes a day to track everything that they were eating. But things would get better and they would get faster at it. And by the six months, they were down to 15 minutes a day. So as you track, you get a little bit better. A lot of the trackers will remember what you've eaten and it make it easier for you to record. Um, so basically the bottom line is if you can carve out a few minutes a day, you can take what you're already doing to the next level and have more success. But you need to measure everything and know the portion size. Right, if you, if you don't measure and you enter the wrong information, you're not gonna obviously have as accurate of a result. So definitely weighing and measuring as much as possible. And keep at it every and, day. Yep, and keep at it every day. For some people find that they leave and come back to it or they just need to record all the time. Doesn't matter if you use a phone app or paper and pencil, you get advantages either way. Okay, let's go to the phones and we will start with Hudson in Sun Prairie. Hi Hudson, what's your question? Yeah, so I was just wondering what's a uh, good uh, sugar intake for a teenager's diet? Ah, good question. <laughs> uh, well, obviously we look at added sugar and natural sugar differently. So natural sugar, lactose that would be in milk, sucrose and fructose that's in fruit and items like that, we're not too concerned about. But we, we like to try to keep it basically to about 10% of the calories from added sugar. And that has always been tricky to find out because it was never really on the label. The labels are changing now so you can see the total carbohydrates and they're also adding the added sugar and that's the sugar that you want to try to limit. So can teens have a little more because they're so active? Or? They, they usually get more calories because they're more active so they automatically get a little bit more but the American um, Heart Association recommends 10% pretty much across the board so if you get more calories you definitely are allowed a little bit more sugar but obviously keeping the added sugar low is what we want. Okay let's go to Darlene in Verona. Hi Darlene. Hi. Hi what's your question? Yeah I wanted to ask her what she thought about the keto diet. Right very popular right now. And uh huh. I must say, um, as full disclosure, I counsel a lot of patients who are on the keto diet. So um, I do have people that see success with it. I think the main point is to still do it in a healthy way. Um, it started out being a lot of bacon and fat and steak and things like that. But obviously, we still want some healthy fats in there. We want the produce. Um, so being followed by someone reading up on it, really knowing what you're doing can really help. Um, but we have seen people, obviously, just with the previous caller, they bring their added sugars down because basically the keto diet is watching your carbs. Um, so there's definitely a right way to do it. You want to make sure that you do it in a healthy way. <laughs> is it the Atkins diet essentially? It's, it's very similar, yep, yep. And um, some diets like that will have phases, um, but the keto diet just generally means a very, very low intake of carbohydrates. That causes some metabolic changes, so it's always a good idea to talk to your doctor, especially if you're on diabetic medication. And when can you see effects? How long down the road? Usually the, the changeover to kind of go into ketosis usually takes anywhere from three to five days, um, and after that you see some, the most rapid weight loss is gonna happen at the beginning, and then Basically, as long as you stay on it, um, hopefully you'll get some, some good results. People just notice that they lose a little bit uh, more weight a little bit faster in a ketosis diet. But it's definitely a... It works. And, it, and it's an intense diet, but it works. Um, you really have to be committed and, and pay attention a lot to your food. And of course, that... Write um, down your food. <laughs> write down your food, because you're going to be wanting to watch your carbohydrates. That's where we started. That, yeah. We're out of time. If you're on the line to stay there, Michelle will talk to you off the air. We'll see you next month. All right, thank Chris you. has one final check of the forecast. Plenty of sunshine, folks, going through the rest of this afternoon. It's a blue sky out there right now. We might see some cloud cover, especially as you work your way towards northern Wisconsin. That is where some additional pop-up showers are also possible this afternoon. We'll see temperatures topping out to the mid to upper 70s, but we struggle out of the 60s tomorrow. It'll be a breezy day with a high right around 70 degrees. Near 80 for Thursday, cooling back down for the weekend. All right, that's our time for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon.